Hello everyone, my name is Barb and I'm the Thrill Bruise Blogger. I'm trying not to get so much glare on my glasses, but of course it's not going to work. Okay, what I have for you today are the arcs of Sent from Sent by publishers and authors. This first one, Proof, was sent to me by the author. Ted D. Bernard, the name of it's Proof, and it's about giants. It's a really good story, and it combines myth, legend, Bible, um, things that are going on on YouTube, all kinds of things. But it's it's a real story, and it says. The Giants actually once roamed the earth. College graduate student Ty Larson's life gets turned upside down when he becomes caught up in an age-old conspiracy. After stumbling onto a lost civilization only briefly mentioned in the Bible, as he uncovers mounting evidence lying their ancient inhabitants to the colossal stone structures scattered across the planet, Others will, with more sinister goals begin to emerge, with aspirations remain a mystery. From the time-worn ruins in the high mountains of Bolivia and Peru, to the massive megaliths in Baalbek, Lebanon, to the Great Pyramid itself, Ty unknowingly inches ever closer to unearthing the disturbing truth of history of mankind. Although this novel is fiction, it is based on factual events, biblical scripture, texts bound in the Dead Sea Scrolls omitted from the Bible, and many other legends from around the world that millions believe to be true. Very pretty book. I just loved it. And this book here by Chase Blackwood, Tower of Arkeen. This is a story that's kind of um, based in the desert. Uh, kind of a, a tale of slavery and it's really really good the author self-published it he self-edited it I give him all the props in the world because he did an amazing job now this one is the very first art that I ever received and I gave it five stars it's an awesome book it's called Hellbound it's by Decoria Brown. And it's fantasy and sci-fi combined. It's um, kind of about the apocalypse. But it's got a different kind of spin. There are these kids and they're like... One is like the son of the Antichrist or the son of the devil uh, or, or a demon. And the others are other kids that they've recruited in, and they think that their way is the right way. So what they do is some of them ha they ha have these suits that give them powers, and each one is different, and they have to fight demons. And it's really, really good. It's really in-depth. To be such a short book, it's really, really intense. Okay, now, these next four are fairy stories. The Shattered World by M.E. Royce. It's, it's got a big, big explanation 
on the day of her birth, the ancient land. Excuse me. On the day of her birth, the ancient land of Alagana trembles with premonition of salvation or destruction surrounding the elvish girl, Eolin. Hearing the same unruly curls as her mother, arrives in a world where darkness has the upper hand. As Eolin grows older, her older sister Arden is tasked with helping her keep Eolin's unruly magic hidden. Tired of the life lived in shadow of her younger sister, Arden abandons them both, leaving the vulnerable Eolin in the sole care of the girl's languishing mother and one step closer to the darkness that taunts them all. Uh, this is really good. I love fairy stories. Um, and it's set in the fairy realm. I really um, I like these better than urban fantasies. I like a straight up fantasy. Okay. Dark Winds Rising. This is actually the second book in the series by Mark Nose. Nose. It's a really good book. Uh, if you like fairy tales, this one is about war. So this is a, I'd say it's a little bit more in depth than most of them because. It's, it's a raging war. Songbreaker, I remember a little of this, not a lot, but somehow their songs control their magic. And I really don't remember much about it, so I'll have to read this. Based on a Nordic myth, in the Finnish Kavala, which inspired Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings, and Gandalf himself comes Songbreaker from USA Today bestselling author to AINO. Aino, the idea of spreading her life, warming the bed of a wrinkled old man, especially when it means life without her secretly betrothed love, is horrifying. But that is the fate that awaits her, because her brother, Yuko, has ducked and feigned wizard fame and lost has duel. I'm sorry, has dueled the famed wizard Vane and has lost. At the last moment, the old man agreed to spare Jonko's life in exchange for Aino's hand, and the contract is sealed with magic and cannot be undone by anyone but Vane himself. Aino swears she'll never marry against her will, yet with only two days until the wizard comes for her, she must find a way to break the deep magic of the contract or she'll be Vane's prisoner for life. Her efforts might free her from the old wizard, but her escape could merely exchanging one kind of prison for another. This is pretty good. Um, I would say it kind of reminds you of song. Oh, you all probably know this. I can't even think the name of it, but the Savage Song. It, it's kind of like that. And fairy ring. This is the last one of my fairy arcs. And this one's by Jackie Stevens. And let me see. It's been a long time since I read most of these. Fourteen year old Livy's best friends just happen to be fairies. With them, she defeats snow monsters and discovers lost treasure running wild through her apartment complex 
Game after endless game. That's how it works with fairies. They might be illusions, but they helped her cope with her father walked out, leaving her to care for her drug-addicted mother alone. Then Child Protective Service swoops in, sending Libby to live with her father, but that doesn't stop the fairies from tagging along. The illusions that helped her in the past now create nothing but trouble. Preluding fires and chemistry and sword fights in the gym. It isn't any wonder her stepmother thinks she's crazy, maybe even on drugs like her mother. Forced into therapy, Libby tries to conform to her new life, but when military precision of her stepmother's household becomes too much she chooses the fairy ring to a dream world where imagination can run free. A very pretty cover. I, I kind of wish it was the front of her though instead of the back of her head. Okay, now this 1884. It's a historical ro romance by A.E. Wasserman. And I've read a few of her books, and they're really good. This one, in London, 1884, recently married Langsford, born of wealth and privilege, is bound by the restrictions of Victorian society. Dynamite has intervened, but the term homosexuality has not, and men cannot, and men can be arrested for either. Langsford accomplished his accompanies his visiting friend Heinrich, eighteen, who innocently flirts with young Anna at Langdon's Linder Hall Market. What should be the end of the story becomes the beginning, for Heinrich falls in love with her. Never part of the plan. Instead, it becomes the catalyst for everything that follows. When he flees Germany to return to her, events unfold that expose terrorist espionage and international intrigue. Langsford walks a fine line in his courses, boundaries he never imagined, rubbing elbows with spies, killers, and would-be assassins to save his friend, stop an assassination, and prevent a war. Lovely picture. Okay. Now, this Kiss Me at Christmas of Valerie Bowden. This is supposed to be a romance. And it is, but it's way more than a romance. Um, it had a really good story. It had a really lovely romance. There's Lady Regina. Uh, she's basically the main character. And her love interest, what is his name? Daffin. Daffin. She's... She's a 30-year-old virgin. She's been told by her brother that she needs to marry, pick a husband, or he's going to pick it for her. So he goes about to do this. And she has a week. To try to. Find someone else. When she hasn't been able to do it in years. So. She goes to Daphne. Which she's attracted to. And makes an indecent proposal. Uh, wanting to have sex with him. And he turns her down. And says that he's not going to have sex with someone who's already engaged and it goes against his moral values and even though he regrets it you know he, it, it's something that he he won't do he, he's a real gentleman but anyway it had a really good story behind it and I'm not going to tell you any of that but there's a really good backstory and you don't always get that with a romance. Sometimes they're just, eh. But this one was really good. Okay. 
now an odd book. This this book by the forces of gravity by Rebecca Fish Ewan. Lovely cover. It's a memoir of a young girl from the time she's like 12 and a half until about 14, 14 and a half. And it's all the things she did while she was homeless and some of it's not really good. And, and it's not nothing but, it, it's very adult. Let's put it that way. But it has lovely pictures all through it. And they're all drawn by her. And I just thought it was so adorable. I, I've only read half of it, but that's because I keep it in my to-go bag. And whenever I have to go somewhere, uh, I take the bag and that way I can read at the doctor's office or on the bus or wherever, you know, just to kill time and not be bored. But I gave this five stars because I really liked it. Especially because of the drawings inside. I, I highly recommend this for adults. Okay. Now. Dark and Demigod. Oh, this is, this is so appropriate for the time. Uh, this is about the President of the United States or the United whatever. I mean it's like there's only like five or six actual countries left and they're huge. Uh, but he has been imprisoned down in this cave. Uh, he's chained up He's sitting on his throne, he's huge, he's powerful, he slams his fist down, rocks break, and eventually he realizes that the prison, he created himself, so with this guy that's called the bookworm, who comes down and, and does interviews with him like once a week. He realizes that he can get loose. All he has to do is really want to. So he gets loose and he's got to go and fight for his country back or his world back. Or <laughs> I'm terribly describing it. But anyway, it says, Imprisoned miles below the surface of the post-apocalyptic Earth, he crafted the first modern day demigod must come to terms with his failings that led to global annihilation from the charcoal ashes of remorse and uncontrollable anger must rise the embodiment of what he was meant to be a savior of all humankind however who he is was meant to be who he is saving them from and why propels this demigod on a pain journey beyond his home planet where he must face much more than just an advanced offshoot of humanity. He and the diminutive bookworm will fight for Earth, but at the cost even a demigod will not be able to rectify. Okay. Now this one, I put in to get this book I didn't think I would get it. I did. It is a, it's a western. It was said to me that it was kind of a, a Jesse James retelling with a woman, but I thought it was more like Calamity Jane. But the only, I mean, she is, she is a gunslinger and it, her name is Jess, but that's, about where the re resemblance stops but it was really really good and I I intend on giving it to a good friend of mine 
because all he reads is westerns and he's not he's not ready any new ones just Zane Gray and uh, Louis L'Amour that's all he ever reads and this one Catherine Coulter and J.T. Ellen's son the sixth day okay these are very popular authors and it's a political thriller and I don't didn't um it was okay but I think enough to the about I think 151 pages because I really don't like political thrillers and it just it wasn't moving fast enough for me and that's my last book and I want to apologize to everybody for the poor quality I really know nothing about filming and editing uh, but you can join me on Goodreads, Facebook, Twitter, and I will try to put all of those in the description box. I don't know if I can. Uh, I really don't know much what I'm doing. I'm just starting out. I could use some advice from some old time YouTubers. And I'm going to give a shout out to Hannah Tay and Lisa Books and Smiles and Christina DeVries. And pretty soon I'm going to make a newbie book tag because uh, I want to get to know everybody. And I need some followers, I need some friends, I need some help, I need some advice. So everybody be blessed and have a good day and may all your books be good ones. Thank you.